the things hoped for. No one built a boat for. Jesus took a beating and his whole body was broke for. Spoke for. Do it, we know who the world was broke for. Abraham had it, matter of fact, that's what he's known for. Faith, y'all, do it, we were saved by grace. If you got it, we can sing it by the way it run a race. Yes, that means we can see it on your face. If the faith don't act, then it really ain't faith. And that really ain't the case. Cause faith ain't faith. Did I have you trying to act out the word every day? Every Christian has faith. It's a gift, we should use it. Some distort the view of it and others just abuse it. It can be irrational and make it give your life up. This is for the cause of Christ and not to get a nice truck. Right, just look, you know you gotta trust God when it seems hard, man. Faith is a must. You gotta leave, leave with it. You gotta leave, leave with it. Take a leap of faith. You gotta leave, leave with it. Jump, and now jump, I'm in now jump, 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 jump. everybody welcome to transformational ministries international podcast i am Lori, and i'm jackie and we are here to bring you a transforming word a word that will literally change your life so today is a <laughs> interesting podcast um I shared with uh jackie i woke up with this full-on message on my mind and i you know i was like okay this is kind of interesting this is one of those areas that by choice i don't too much like to go to <laughs> but uh as i stated you know it was a full message full message this morning so we're just gonna kind of talk about this in a way that will um help men know what God wants from you. Mm. And if you are a single woman and a man presents himself to you, wait, a single saved woman and a man presents himself to you, you will know the expectation God have out of the man so you will know what to look for for a man for your life. You'll know who to say yes to. Let me put it like that. You know, it's so funny how in the in the animal kingdom, you just would think that any animal would get with any animal. You know, I love the animal kingdom. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you really pay attention to the animal kingdom, no. Each individual species, you know, the lion or the turtle or whatever, they have to present themselves. That male <laughs> has to present itself to that female, and then she decides whether or not she wants to um, accept that one as a mate. And there are certain things that they are looking for, right? You're looking for the, if you're a female lion, you're looking for a male that's strong. You're looking for a mm -hmm. male that can rule, protect. Just protect. Yeah. yeah, it's things that you're looking for. Well, in the human kingdom, it should be the same way, but we so off. We're, we're so Ooh. off. We're so yeah. off. But hopefully this message and one of the things as I was praying, uh, I was asking God, you know, just practical, plain, simple, because nothing needs to be complicated, especially in a subject like this. Right. So we're just going to uh, jump right in. So the question, uh, the, the question is what God was well, not really a question, but it's what God wants. From a man, and in parentheses in the title, I put single woman. Use this as a guide. Use this as a guide. So we're going to start off with that. First of all, God wants from a man what he wants from all of his born-again believers. That's what mm -hmm. he, he wants the same for all of us. But as we go through this, there will be a few unique things that are to um a man. So let's just kind of start off with Genesis. Let's go back to Genesis. Yeah, that's right, the beginning. Yeah, so I'll do some reading and, and uh, uh, Jackie, you just going to do what you do. Yes. Because you, mm -hmm. you already done started it, so you're going <laughs> to do what you do. So let me go. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 2 verses 7 through um, 7 through yeah, 24. So let's go, and uh, Jackie, you just stop me when I need to stop. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. So it, when God first created man, there are three things that are evident that God did before he gave Adam Eve. And one of the things.
things that Jackie pointed out this morning, but he's always pointed it out on his podcast and, you know, is that we do not know how long Adam was in, uh, was walking with God before Eve came. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? That's right. We do not know. This, this, we read scriptures like everything happened consecutively, you know, moment after moment after moment after moment. And I say this right here. And the reason why I say what I say is because the sun uh, was not created until the fourth day. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we know that the sun, the earth rotated around the sun, sun mm-hmm. determined a 20, you know, by rotating mm-hmm. 24 hours. When it go away around the sun a year. Mm-hmm. 365. Yeah. So if the sun wasn't created, how was the days that we know of now? For as time go. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. So that you know awesome. that uh, it, it's definitely not based on 24 hours days or 365 days a year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then God's time is in different anyway because he said to him a day is like a, a, a day is like a thousand, a thousand years, years. And a thousand years is as a day unto the Lord. Yeah, so clearly God's time was way different. But as you're going to realize, to further, you know, push that point, what Jackie is saying, look at the three things that God did before Adam. God gave Adam Eve. First of all, he educated him. The scriptures will bear that out. Adam got knowledge from somewhere. Well, if it was only him and God, whatever knowledge he got came from. From God. So we know that God educated him. And then God gave him expectations. Did you see that in what he shares with Eve? But uh, God also says, you know, he says specific things to Adam concerning how Adam is supposed to live, you know, Mm -hmm. in this garden. And then he gave him a job. So that's three things. First, he got knowledge of from God. Then he got expectations of how he's supposed to live mm-hmm. in this garden. And then he got a job. Okay? That's right. So we're going to see that in Scripture. Why did we start here? Because we're going to go back to the beginning. And we're going to start by telling men, before you enter into a relationship with a woman for marriage, Even if you are now a divorced man and it was not done right, you have an opportunity, if the Lord say the same, you know, to enter into a proper marriage um, the right way. And it's going to start with these same three things. You need to be educated about God. You need to be educated and know what it is God wants from you. I'll never forget what you shared with me about, you said, if a man cannot... Yeah, if he can't, yeah, if he cannot teach his wife and, and instruct his wife in the things of the Lord, he's not ready for marriage. Not only that, if, uh, uh, we see in in the book in the, in the in the Old Testament that the man was to teach the children lay, why they lay down, why they get up, why they move around, get up, do, do things of God. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know the scriptures, how can you even teach your children? Right. Right, God right. is holding you responsible to, 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 to train their child right? in the way they go. You think mom should do that. No, it's the, it's the man's responsibility, mm. according mm. to God's word. I, I asked this uh, man who was uh, working on, uh, you know, getting a woman ready to marry him. And his methods, they kind of interested me. And I said to him, I said, um, so if you don't have all of these outside things. Can you lead the woman? It, can you lead her and teach her? He got angry about that <laughs> because he was depending on outside things to educate his future bride. He was just depending on but but nothing, well, nothing of himself. Right. Yeah. And I felt like, mm, that's really, really interesting that your future wife will have to connect to all of these outside sources and be a part of all of this stuff as opposed to marrying a godly man 
who has submitted his life to God and can lead her. Mm -hmm. But yeah. he got really kind of got really angry about that, you know. God want men to know him for themselves. Yeah. You want to impress your woman, right? A saved woman? Be a true follower and leader of a godly man. Mm -hmm. Um Absolutely. Well, and you know, you had been telling me that for the longest that a man ought to be able to teach his wife. You're not in a hurry to get married. Get yourself together first. That's right. Make yeah. sure that you're walking with the Lord. Make sure that your relationship with him is real. Now, people are different. Everybody's different. You you can get into the scriptures and, you know, you may differ and disagree on what you believe. But then when it's the right woman, she's going to believe like you believe. You guys are going to have that in common. Because if you don't believe the same, how can you walk together? So it's going to have to be someone that sees the word of God, see what you're saying, you know. But that shows up when you start to educate and when you start to teach. And she ought to be able to ask questions and challenge that and say, well, I don't see that. And you guys, you know, go through the scriptures until you can uh, come to an agreement. And, 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 and like you say, uh, the education is in the word of God. I mean, it's good to maybe read somebody else's material, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But don't base your whole life on what they have wrote, you know, without the Word of God, but just verifying with the Scriptures. Amen. So you, that's 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 your plumb line. That's your guide. Is the Word of God, mm -hmm. and it helps if you just stick to what the Word says. Absolutely, that just helps because what you just said, Jack. When you start getting into all of this, what somebody else said, you know, even if you feel like the revelation is good. What has God said to you, though? Mm -hmm. If all of your revelations are based on what somebody else said, what is God saying to you? Well, that's an indication. Mm -hmm. You might not be spending time with God. you just spending a lot of time reading what other people are saying. You know, uh, what I like to do, uh, if I'm reading a book or something, if it don't have no scripture, then I, I'm not too much interested in that kind of book. Mm -hmm. But if a lot of scriptures is in the, in the person writing, and I, and, I, and I see that when I go to the Bible to read that scripture, mm -hmm. I'm not going to just only read that one scripture that he, that he have there. I'm gonna, I may read the whole chapter mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. connection with that particular scripture. To see if to make that's sure that what that's he's in talking the, about. That it's within the context of yeah. What, yeah. What, what he's like to saying there. So, because it's my, it's my responsibility to make sure I got to hold me accountable, not the person that I'm listening to. He's going to hold me accountable for what I know and what I've been studying and reading. Mm, wow. I, I heard a woman say yesterday um, that someone was telling her, well, you need a covering. You need a covering. Well, <laughs> your first covering and designated covering is your husband mm -hmm. as far as a human on this earth. Outside of that, your covering is the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, right? Yeah, you can be in a church and be under a pastor, but you got to keep in mind, God may have you there for a, a season. You know, when you when you when you mention that, uh, a, a lot of times when you mention that, what you just said, I thought about an old a jack leg pastor want to manipulate the scriptures. And and uh, take advantage of sexual uh, advantage of young people, young mm -hmm. people in this church, that they are, you know, taking care of him and make sure he's coveted uh, because my wife she ain't doing it. So uh, and they, they they fall for that stuff. Mm, okay, that's a that's interesting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's um when when people get the idea that the pastor has taken the place of Christ in their life. That he has that kind of power, anything can happen. Yeah. So if you're a single woman and you know you're in a ministry, you got to remember Christ is your head. That is your ultimate mm -hmm. head. Just because you have a pastor, it doesn't mean that you're subject to do everything that he says. Am I saying um, uh, 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 don't listen to your pastor? You got to vet everything that you're being told to do. Through the word of God. Never be never be a difficult person. Mm -hmm.
there. Just never be a difficult person. Never be the type of person that just you just challenging stuff because you like a good debate. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. You get in the word for yourself. And whatever a pastor is saying to you, God, it will bear witness with what God has already yeah. said. It's already said. So you want to be careful uh, with things like that, given what uh, Jackie just said, you know, yeah, if you're at a place where you feel like this is your covering and you got to do all kinds of stuff, yeah, no, 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 no. That's, that's, it, your, your covering is the Lord Jesus Christ, no. right? Yeah, man, what man. he says, in fact, judge, let's go man. on to the scriptures because yeah. what God says is the thing that you have to follow. And if you're not sure, you always ask someone that maybe has been in that knows the scriptures and been walking with the Lord for a while, and you can sh ask them about certain things. But let's go on to the word. We're going to be reading from Genesis chapter 2, 7 through 9. Jackie, you stop me wherever you need me to stop at, but I'm going to go ahead on and read through this. So we're talking about the three things that God did before he gave Adam a wife. He educated him, he gave him expectations, and he gave him a job. Genesis 2, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. It says, Then the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. Oh, I'm reading from the NASB version. Uh, from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living person. Verse 8 says, The Lord planted a garden towards the east in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. Okay, now we're already seeing that God has made Adam and Adam is alone right now. And God has placed Adam in this garden. Out of the ground, the Lord calls every tree to grow that it is that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. In verse where are we at? Verse. We're going to go down to verse uh, 15. Verse 15 says, um, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. Okay? This would be our first, the first time we see the job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's put him in this garden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat it you shall die. Now you see the expectation. Okay? Mm -hmm. I've put you here, I've given you a job to do, right? And I've given you some instructions. I expect you to follow what I tell you to do. So these are the expectations God had of the man. And I'm see, that's and that and that's where obedience comes in. Mm -hmm. and obedience. That's the key there. Right here. Mm -hmm. That's the first time we see the relationship between God and man and obedience. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And and you know, I was thinking about this the other day, Jagged Dad. Whatever it is God tell us to do, it's for our benefit. It's not for his. We can't do anything to him. We can't hurt him. We can't disappoint him. We can't. Well, he's poured out his wrath concerning us on the Lord Jesus Absolutely. Christ. Absolutely. Yeah. And his wrath was not good. It, it resulted in death, separation from him. Not just the physical death, but the physical, the spiritual separation. You know, Jesus on the cross said, you know, uh, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? You know, this was scary. Absolutely. this was, And it should be that way with us as believers. When we can't sense, I don't know about y'all, but me, when I can't sense the presence of God, damn, I don't like that yeah. feeling. And you know, and, and you're talking about somebody that's been with God from eternity to past. Yes. And, uh, and now, uh, out of all eternity, just now you, 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 that separation. Yeah. That's, ooh, that's uh, that's why I always say what, well, he, he was uh, he was all alone. I yeah. think all alone. Yes, yeah, in darkness, in, dark. yeah, in complete, absolute darkness. No like light, yeah. God, where are you? Where are you? 
You know, that's why I always laugh when I read John 17. I always think about the fact that Jesus was like, yo, I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I want to go back to the glory I had before I came to this earth. You know, because that's for me. I always laugh at that because it was like, y'all, Jesus was trying to get up out of here. He was not trying to continue and stay here and hang around. This was not, but that's how we are, though. It's like, wait, I, 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 I'm getting ready to go. God can't wait till my grandchildren get old. Oh, yeah. God can't can I can't, wait till I'm my just, children I'm get old. I'm blessed now. Yeah. Things are going good. I'm dead free. Don't, 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 I ain't ready yet. Don't. Yeah, but yeah, I've heard people up. say that. It's like, I'm ready not ready, ready to go. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but Jesus was. Once his mission was complete, it, he was done with this. I'm ready to go. I want the glory back that I had before I came here. Okay, and we're going to go on, we're still, uh, we're reading in now verse 18 through 24. Yeah, 18 through 20. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Hmm. Verse 19, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the sky. And brought them to the man to see. I mean, this right here, this gives you a glimpse into what you were talking about, about the time. See, we're thinking that everything happens just like that, just like that. <laughs> but look at the meticulous of God, the, the, God being so meticulous here, right? It says he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Do you think Adam just went, butterfly, giraffe, uh, rhino? No! No, most likely he had to study what he saw and see what that brought up on the inside Absolutely. of him, yeah, I, you yeah. know, with the knowledge that God had already imparted in him about things about life and gardening and all of that. So, you know, Adam had to look at these things. So we know that God gave him uh, an education and a job. This was a job. The man gave names to all of the livestock and the birds of the sky and to every animal of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. So he was naming these animals before he got a wife. He was doing a job, a job God gave him to do, two in fact, mm -hmm. that garden and now the animals. So it seemed to me that Adam was pretty busy. And, 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 uh, <laughs> and, and that, none of that. The, the scripture says that man was alone, mm -hmm. but he was not lonely. Mm. He was doing, his, his sole function was God, doing what God called him to do. Oh, wow, that's that, good. That, that good um, that's it. He wasn't looking. Uh, he wasn't looking. He wasn't lusting after nothing. Mm. He was just focusing on on pleasing God and doing what God had commanded him to do. Wow, that that is awesome. That is awesome. So verse twenty one says, "So the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. And the Lord God fashioned into." A woman, the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to this man. Then the man said, now I want you to listen to what Adam said. This is also going to show you that Adam was educated, right? Mm -hmm. he, he knew some stuff. Oh, yeah. Right? Now, he done named animals. He working in the garden. Hey, how did he know how to take care of these plants? And You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but he did. He did. This this information, this knowledge was given to him. But look at what he said when God gave him the woman. He said, at last, this is bone of my bones. How did he know that? Yeah, yeah. How did he he's know seeing, that? He's seeing a, a human being, but he's recognizing and knows that she was made from yeah, that's right. a bone of his. How did he know I that, Jack? That's right. God told him. Yeah. Because the scripture said God put him to sleep. He was in a deep sleep. Yeah. Anesthesia. And, what is that called? Anesthesia. Yeah. Yeah, he was out. He yeah. was out. But he said, and this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken 
out of man. And then he goes on to say, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. This is the first message about marriage right here. He said he shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Yeah. Not women. <laughs> not woman. He said, but his wife. Yes. And they shall be one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, but they were not ashamed. Now, that goes into a whole different other teaching there about the fall of man. But looking here at the scriptures, did we not see that God gave Adam education throughout this length of time, whatever it was, um, that he was educating him. Mm -hmm. And then he gave him expectations, things that he wanted him to do, till that garden keep that garden name these animals we don't know how long it took him to no. name mm -hmm. you know a, 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 the the animals but those were that's what his job was that's what he was doing and it was after all of this or during all of this but after that started that God gave him a wife yeah. this is the first time we see the word wife used in this capacity yeah, I like that when you when you start reading out, then, then God formed man, mm -hmm. and God uh, blew into his nostrils the the the, uh, the breath of life that God put in man. His spirit. Uh, his, yeah, his spirit. Mm -hmm. So, and then we know that um, God talked with Adam during the cool of the day, and he, he, he so he, say he was uh, he was very familiar with y'all, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. though later on when. When God, when they did sin, and God appeared to him, and he that he was looking at Adam, where are you? But see, so Adam, Adam was he was he was he was he wasn't afraid at that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. was fully aware when God communicated with him in the cool of the day. See, God is a spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The spirit of God was in it, it very well. It could have been the, in <laughs> it very well could have been the. Uh, incarnated the, the God, the Word, which we know became flesh, could have been walking in the garden with Adam. Mm, mm. We know he was walking with God. Yeah, we, we, either yeah, way. Yeah, either, you know, exactly. Either you know, way. Because in the Old Testament, God appeared to people, and in the, in, in the, in the scripture indicated that that was the Son of God manifests itself mm -hmm. in, in, the, in, in different, different places. So we don't know. What was going on with, with Adam in with Adam in the garden? But definitely, God was there with him. Right, right. He was walking with God. Yeah. You can narrow that down to it was him and God. It was him and a personal, intimate relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You know, when God called out, Adam, where are you? That tells you there. You know, that this was relationship. Mm -hmm. It was relationship. But we know also that sin interferes with us hearing from God and interacting with God and having that intimate relationship with God. That has not changed. That has not changed. So, you know, which is why you want to live a life where you're not just living in sin. Now, we all do stuff. Some stuff we do, we don't even, God has not even revealed to us yet that that is sinful behavior. You know, you might not know. Not yet, but as you continue to walk with him, slowly but surely, he, he lets you know when you're ready to handle this, he will reveal this to you, okay? But listen, what we're, what we're getting to here is before Eve even came along, Adam had an intimate, close relationship with God. Before you want to take on a wife, before you want to start trying to create a family, or let me say even a blend of family and do all of that, you want to make sure that this, this part right here, this part, walking with God, is the central core part of your life as a man of God. Now, does that mean this don't apply to women? It does apply to women. But the man takes on a different role when he becomes the the man of the house, the husband, the oh, head of the the home. It takes on a different role then. 
If you single and you just got a relationship with God, okay, that's good. But the moment you start talking about bringing a woman into your life as your wife, big responsibility. that's a big yeah. responsibility. That's, yeah. And I will tell you, you need God. Yeah. And, and this thing, Jay, it's not about no sex. This is about real men walking with God mm -hmm. and want to fulfill the things of God. God's God's life want to fulfill that. And this, like you say, these are this is for Christian. These are men of God. Yeah. The, the, the God got expectation for those who are called out and called His as a, as as children of God. And I would say, you know, now this is just ministry inside of me saying this, not necessarily trying to minister to men, but <coughs> maybe you just became a born again believer. You know. You take the time. You just don't be in no hurry. Take the time to learn of God and learn of his ways. You're not going to know everything, but he no doubt will let you know when you're ready for a wife. Because a lot of times you think, oh, I just get me a Christian woman and I'll be good. No, it doesn't work like that. Because if you two do not agree, you know, anybody can agree Um Physically, let me let me let me let me go back to. I'm going to use Jackie and I sometimes. When we first met, <laughs> when we first met, it wasn't like instant chemistry. But you know, I, he was attractive, I was attractive, but it wasn't like instant chemistry. Like you looking at somebody and going, "Hey, where have you been?" You know that kind of stuff. Cause we were saved. We both were saved, and we just was not, we just was not moved by that. Matter of fact, I could not, I'm going to be honest, I couldn't even see how handsome Jacket was when we first met because I wasn't trying to get with nobody. I ain't trying to be nobody's girlfriend. I'm not trying to be your woman. I'm not trying to, you know, but I had somebody that was near and dear to me in my life, and they really wanted me to meet Jackie. And I, I mean, I haven't dated, I haven't done anything. It's like seven years of my life and I've been good. But I couldn't even see how handsome he was because I just wasn't trying to be with anybody. But as God started revealing his self in this, he had us go to the spirit. The reason why it didn't, didn't it was difficult in the very beginning because we didn't go to the spirit. We both was there because of this one person who wanted us to meet. Yes, right. But I yeah. guarantee you, when we... Because you don't know how to date. If you've never dated before as a Christian, you don't know how to date. You go off of stuff that you used to do. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord let me know, for me, I don't know how he said it to Jackie, but when he let me know, no. Nah, this is about the spirit. This is not about the natural. It is not. A, when he let me know that, things changed immediately. Yeah. Immediately. And it wasn't that long after it that. Was, it wasn't like it was sexual attracted stuff like that. It's just, it, it was a connection within the spirit realm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, we, and, we, and we also know that Paul tells us not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So, if you a believer guy, or don't try to get yourself caught up with an unbeliever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if you a, a Muslim and you're a Christian, that's that's a division. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Even if you're a Roman Catholic and this person is a Baptist or whatever, there, there's a also the, there's a divi division in your belief. But it was it was it, you and I really ne we never we've been married 15 years. Mm -hmm. We never had a conflict. Mm -hmm. Of conviction in in the scriptures to say, I don't believe that you believe this. We, we that, 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 I mean, we on the we on the same sheet of music. Now this had to be God to connect you and I together. Absolutely. I mean, it just it's just a glove and a hand fit yeah, together. Yeah, absolutely. I'm in total agreement um, because I've heard people say things in scripture that I was like, that's not right. That's that's that don't even. That don't even line up, you know. But when you when you make meeting someone about the spirit, 
God can line y'all up. Mm -hmm. He can line you up. I came to Jackie, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but I also came to Jackie knowing that God made the man the head. Mm -hmm. And that this man is responsible. He is responsible spiritually. I've been sitting on the jacket for 15 years. But I know the word of God. Yeah. I have a relationship with God. I know how to hear God. I don't go running to Jackie, you know, like trying to live my life through him. What is God saying? That's not how we live. Right. But what I do is I see, I see this man. I see the time and the energy that he puts in the scripture. But I also see that he just want to live for God. He ain't trying to control nobody. He's not trying to be known or, you know, none of that stuff. He just lives a simple life. Walking with the Lord. I've seen him struggle. And I've seen him pray. And God brought him through. I've seen it. I've even, God has used me to prophesy the jacket. That's right. A, proph a prophecy that came to pass. And it still comes to yeah. pass. You know. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that when you, man, when you are choosing a woman, look deeper then whether or not that woman is, she, look deeper than her being pretty or her having a, a nice shape and all of that. Because, listen, things change in Absolutely, life. Yes. You can be going to the gym every day and fit and all of that. You can get sick one time. One time, and all of that going to the gym and all of that, that's over. That and the body composition changes. So here's the thing, but can you love her if she's sick? Can you love her if maybe her hair has uh, come out because of something? That's why we're saying to the men, look deeper than that. She can be pretty on the outside. I consider myself to have been very attractive, mm -hmm. a very shapely woman, a cute woman. I, I felt like I've always been cute. I had a cute face and a cute personality to go along with it. But Jackie, Jackie had been there. He done seen cute before. He done seen fine before. And he he already knew that that wasn't, it wasn't all of that. One time I saw Jackie with his mouth open and looking at me like I was like the best thing since <laughs> ice cream. I was talking about the word of God. He was sitting down. We were in McDonald's. And he was sitting down. He had sat down. And I started talking about the word of God. I don't even know what I was, I don't know what I was saying, what the conversation was. But I remember I was talking about the word of God. And I caught a glimpse of how he was looking at me at that moment. And I saw that. But now the same thing happened to me. When he started praying, I said, Shoo. this man done prayed Genesis through revelation and i wasn't even praying with him i had stopped I, you know how you when your people praying and you see everybody stop close their eyes i didn't i had stopped praying i was listening you i know, was you like know, when you was talking <laughs> he said you when you <laughs> you was talking about how i was looking at you is that uh you know when you sit down at the table and you eating a good meal yeah how your legs do uh, move? Yeah. You. <laughs> your legs doesn't move you. <laughs> your legs move back and forth. Yeah. That's how that word is. When your word is like you, you get the moving. Your yeah. legs get the moving. Yeah. I, I never forget that. But that's <laughs> when I, I saw the in, uh, interest in me that went further than, you know, him looking at me to see if I'm attractive and all of that. Now, one of the things Jackie shared with me is he liked taller women. Well, God flipped the script on him. He gave him a little five foot even powerhouse. <laughs> That's right. That that, that standard might come in small package. <laughs> so all of a, all of a sudden, I had height. Now let me tell you but something. But it was in the spirit okay, real. <laughs> I, at the same time, men, uh, if uh, God is directing you to a woman, and this woman, you know, maybe she, she been saved longer than you, or however. But maybe she, God, she have an anointing on her. That that's the, in my case, the challenge for me is to make sure I seek God even greater. Mm. So with with Lori, with you, when I met you, 
and and the spirit of God moving in you, I knew then you can't come in your half stepping jacket. Mm -hmm. You got to get into the word of God. You got to allow God to use you because your responsibility is to be able to share the gospel, the word of God with your wife. Mm -hmm. So it was my responsibility to make sure that God was, I had the scripture, that had the word of God in me and living the word of God. Mm -hmm. I knew the word of God been saved for a long, a long time, mm -hmm. you know, maybe longer than you, but that didn't, that don't matter how long you've been saved. Uh, is, is, is walking in the word of God and walking it out like you like you said earlier. Absolutely. It's just allowing the spirit of God to work in your life because just being saved, you know, you make a, I made a lot of mistakes in my walk in Christ. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you learn from those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't mean that life is going to be perfect. Um, and I would say this to anybody. A real marriage is a challenge. Sure, it's a because challenge. you have flesh that you have to deal with you still got to deal with all of those emotions you got to deal with the you know being angry you got to deal with um you know just sometimes wanting to be by yourself or and we have a unique life because we spend a lot of time together but you know it's god when you can be around somebody okay so we live together we work together we eat together you know, before the heart attack, we would go and work out together, but we never got back to that yet. But me and Jackie spent a lot of time together. But we find our ways to steal away. He goes, he has his office area, I have mine. And we're in the same house, but we go, you know, my office is now back at the house. And so, but we go and we spend time apart, but yet we're still together. We both agree there's no way we can have this kind of smooth relationship without God. Yeah, yeah. Without God. And we have our moments when things go south just for a minute. And that's because of flesh. And it could be because of sin. But we run to the Lord and we get this thing right. So we don't want to paint a picture that, oh, if man, if you get a saved woman, then it's going to be perfect. Woman, if you get a saved man. No, it's got to be the one that God directs you to. And that's what you read in 18. Yeah. Verse 18 says, I will make him a hep helper suitable to him. Yeah. Yeah. And God so, does that. And, and again, I want to use Jackie and I's relationship to kind of point that out. One of the things that was strong with me is I wanted a protector. I believe all women are like this at the end of the day. This is just how we were raised. We was just women for the most part. Women were raised that the man is supposed to protect us. The man is supposed to be there for us and all that. Well, I grew up in a home with mom and dad, and they did not get along well. But my dad had this air about him. He carried himself, you know. He was the protector of that home. Now, he, you know, him and my mom, they, they crashed and burned. But my dad still carried himself like he was the protector of his home. Nobody was going to come in his house and just do anything. And he, people around him feared him, right? He wasn't, he wasn't a man to play with. He was a quiet man. He wasn't a riotous man or a crap-talking man or none of that. He was a big man, 6'3". And he was a working man, you know, he carried guns and he had, but he just was the type of man that had this air about him. Well, that's what I grew up with. So for me, I needed a man that matched that. Absolutely. Well, when I met, when I met Jackie, it, it tripped me out because the thing that I had wanted was really strong with me was somebody to protect me and look out for me. I lived by myself. I was kind of afraid. Yeah, I'm being vulnerable by right here talking about this. Yeah, I was saved and I was trusting God. But, you know, just every now and then I lived in a really little nice house, but it was a small, it was a little house. And, you know, the windows were low. Mm -hmm. Things that I paid attention to. But anyway, long story. When I met Jackie, he was exactly, he was exactly what I wanted. This man was uh, car carrying, gun carrying, toting, you name it, shotgun man, the Glock man, big guns, little guns. He had all of that. But 
but that's because he was in law enforcement and he had also retired from the military. So it was nothing for them to have guns. That was just lifestyle for them. But then he also, you know, he was looking at protecting his home as well. And he had this uh, dog. I was afraid of that dog. It was a big rock wild. But I'm just painting a picture to show you. God said he'll give you somebody suitable. That was suitable. He was a protector by nature. Right. And I wanted to be protected. Now, he, God would never have given him a woman that felt like, I take care of myself. Yeah. I don't and, need and, no and man to take care of me. And, and uh, I, I, I'm telling you, uh, you, 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 if a man, you know, won't take care of the house, he works in the inf infidel. Uh, if something happened and you running and you and you left your wife, let me tell you something, my instinct, if something happened, my wife goes behind me. When I go, if we go in, I so how many times I went out some way, and I'm looking, and I say, go this way. Yeah. For some reason, or another there may be a car there with some somebody in it, and I'm directing it to go this way. Or when I go outside from a, in a restaurant, I'm looking to make sure everything is safe. Yeah. I mean that's. It's yeah, in yeah, you. Yeah. It's it, you know when it's that, in I'm, you to do in that. Garage, I'm looking outside to make make sure that she's straight. You know. It's, it, yeah, that's in you. Yeah, it, it, it's protection. in you. And, yeah. and let me say this. If maybe you were male and you didn't grow up and that wasn't really instilled in you, it's in you it's because in, that's how it. God made you. Yeah. It may have not been cultivated. It may not have been, you know, brought up a lot in you. And maybe you didn't, maybe you had a hardcore mother, uh, just a really, you know, mom that was, hardcore so maybe you don't think about women being taken care of like that but when you start walking with god god start putting things back in order put them back in order. he put them back in order before jackie and i got together i was a single mom i was taking care of everything by myself i was holding this thing down by myself right but when i got with him slowly but surely things started changing like i would go out and and get my car fixed, or I would go out and pump gas, and I would I would just do all these things that I had to do because I did not have nobody else to do them. But I didn't get married and start asking Jackie to do this and do that and do. I didn't. He just started doing things as a way of him taking care of me and providing for me, and you know it just came natural. Yeah. But God put the because had He married a woman that was a little bit more hardcore and self sufficient and didn't want that. He would have had to not be able to do that. That's right, yeah. Because if he tried to push that on a woman, it would have been contention. Mm -hmm. But see, he didn't have to worry about that because I was up for it. If that makes you feel good, it makes me feel good. I was I, I, up I'm for it. You, uh, so, but the, uh, the people that now is, is being uh, formed and transformed by the world standards mm -hmm. and not God standards. Uh, and because men want to... Uh, domestic violence. They want to fight the woman. God didn't make you to do that. that that's 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 of the spirit of the world mm. to, to to be violent and domestic violence. Uh, God didn't make you like that. You come up to where God really wants you. Seek God. Turn your life over to Him and allow Him to manifest His life in you. Because you lack of love, you 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 lacking something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. the world the world got something opposite than what God have for you. Yeah. Now I, I imagine when you want these world standards or you are shaped by the world, hearing a message like this is like, oh my God, oh they so they so old, they so this and that. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, God did not set this as as his way of life for men and women for it to be difficult and hard. He's the only one that can make this easy. He is the only one. The only time Jackie and I butt heads is when we have gotten in the flesh or, you know, it's some kind of sinful behavior in the way, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I say sinful behavior, keep in mind, it all starts in the mind. So if you're thinking wrong, yeah. if your thinking is wrong, your behavior is going to be wrong. Yeah. And that behavior will interfere with you walking together. Being in agreement. Everybody is different. So I do want to say this. 
you might not be like Jackie. You may not be that kind of man, but you may be drawn to a woman that is really confident woman, knowing what she's doing, knowing where she's going. Knowing, you know, she may have some, some strong leadership skills, okay? Ain't nothing wrong with you having a woman like that. But you are responsible for being the head of the household. That It doesn't mean that you get a weak woman. I'm not a weak woman. Oh, no. I'm the owner of a company that I run, and we've been doing this for 13 years now, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, I provide, I, no, I don't provide. I contribute mm -hmm. to the family. I've raised two children. They're, 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 they're grown. They're gone. They're successful. They're handling their business. They got a lot of what I put in them. So I'm not a weak woman. Don't misunderstand that. But I, I, I respect God's order. And his order is that Jackie is the head of this household. Ultimately, Jackie has the last word if we are in a disagreement about mm -hmm. something. It has to be that way. You might be on a job and you disagreeing with your boss about something. But if you're going to keep that job, at the end of the day, whatever your boss say goes. That's it. But if it's contrary to your faith, if it's contrary to you know, what you believe, then you may have to leave if you can't allow that boss to... Be the head right. of that company. But you might want to sell this instead of doing that because what you believe your boss saying ain't going to work is not. Okay. But if they stick it to their guns, you got to stand down. And in order for that job to flow, you have to let the boss be the boss. Well, here in a marriage, see, you can't have two heads. No, no. If you have two pastors of a church, who is the pastor of the church? That's Just right. answer that question. Oh, so you throw co-pastor on there. But that's still equality. You pastor, I'm pastor. I know. Who's the pastor of the church? Yeah. You can have a pastor, but then have associates and yeah, things like that. But you can't have two pastors. You cannot. You may have a senior pastor, and if that's the one, but that's the one in charge. That's the one in charge. And uh, the other pastor answers in him. Yeah. So her, I guess in, in the house. In the house, Jackie may be the senior pastor. <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying, this is difficult if your mind is warped. It's not difficult if you're seeing it through God's eyes. God is the head. Jesus came under God the Father, right? Because mm -hmm. Jesus always referred to his father. Oh, yeah. I do what my father does. I do what he has done. He never said, you know, I'm running this. Yeah. No. There has to be I'm order. Not, I'm pleasing the Father. There has to be order. I talk a lot more than Jackie do. But Jackie is a, the type of person that he doesn't just jibber-jabber. <laughs> what do you say women hands cackling? He doesn't do that. He, he just states matter of factly what stuff mm -hmm. is and go on but imagine if he was like me that, <laughs> that, that would just be a lot of just oh, yeah. you know but that's not how he is he allowed me to be how I oh, am yeah. but when it's time to shut something down he does it when it's time to say enough of that let's move on he does it right even when we do podcasts together I talk a lot more than him but if you notice, he only brings in uh, examples or he'll bring in more scriptures to talk about what we're talking about. So, Amen. what God wants. Another thing, and this is something that we all share, is God wants a man to accept the gift of salvation. Yes. He wants him to hold it as it is valuable, as a precious stone. And he wants him to walk it out in life. So let's look at salvation real quick. Mm, mm, mm. Ephesians 2, 8 and 10 says, For by grace are you saved. This is where you're born again at, right here. For by grace are you saved through faith. And this is not of yourself. 
It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. I tell you what, that's a, that's a, it's, it's packed. It is packed. <laughs> it's packed. Yeah, that's a packed. Woo, that's heavy there, buddy. So yeah. the first thing we see is that God wants you saved, but he yeah. wants you saved his way. His way. His and, way. And, and everything about salvation is gone mm -hmm. from the beginning to the end. It's not about us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And nothing, we can't earn it. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't keep it. It's God that does everything. It says, by his grace, mm -hmm. God grace, his unmerited favor, that we'll say, and he have given to every man the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. given us faith to receive him. I mean, it's, it's, it's all God. So he want us saved, man and woman. Yeah. He want you born again. He want you saved. If you're listening to this message and you've never given your life to the Lord and you are aware of that or you know that, Okay, this is your time right here. When you start hearing God speak to you and he tell you, I want you to have a relationship with me. I want you to be like Adam before the fall. I want you to walk with me. Woo! I want you to know what I know. I want you to let me impart things into you that you don't know nothing about. Right? Let, I want to give to you things that, that, that only I can give to mm. you. Right? When you think about Adam, Adam had no awareness of owning anything. But God put him in a garden and gave him the ability to run that thing, right? You, you, when you say that, <laughs> I, I'm talking about here God formed Adam mm -hmm. from the dust of the earth. And Adam became a living stone and just, he's just sitting there. And God now impart mm -hmm. in him his knowledge and his wisdom. Mm -hmm. And Adam just sucking it like a sponge. Sucking it up. <laughs> Well, you know, God breathed into Adam the breath of life. So that's the spirit. That's God's spirit, who we call the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, <laughs> right? That's God put his spirit in Adam. Along with God's spirit came knowledge of things that Adam did not know, yeah. right? It's the same with us. The Holy Spirit in us, he revealed things to us that we don't know. And Jackie, you are my witness. I was studying the scriptures the other day. And all of a sudden, I got this revelation where God sees the word and behavior. He sees that there's no difference. There's mm -hmm. no difference. And I was like, wait a minute. And I'm sharing this with Jackie, and he's smiling. And I said, there's absolutely no difference. And all these different scriptures started coming up. And so then I was watching a movie or something later, but I just couldn't get away from just meditating on that. So I decided to look up how Hebrew people saw thoughts. Man, by the time I got done, I was like, God gave me a revelation that how Hebrews understood how they understood God saw thoughts and behavior, that those were the same thing. <laughs> and I was like, I ran to Jackie, he was working, and I'm like, I just want to talk to uh, you. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. you know, I got this teaching about how the Hebrews saw thoughts and words, and I said, God revealed that to me. That was inside of me. The Holy Spirit brought that up. So that's what God wants. He wants you to really be born again. He wants you to really be saved, saved his way. Not well, I, I go to church every now and then. You can be unsaved and do that. You, Your mother could have been going to church all the time, and you know just to go to church. And that would make you saved. But God wants you saved. He wants you saved by faith, yeah. by grace, through faith. He wants you to, this thing to be set off in your life by him giving you the gift of salvation and you receiving it. The next thing, Jackie, did you want to unpack any more of that? Uh, no, yeah, that you, we, I can't brag about my salvation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I felt good about about salvation. You know, as in 
looking at other people like, hey, man, that guy is smoking and drink. You know, when I was younger in, in Christ, because they was doing something a little bit different than what I thought, but like, 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 a, like I'm, I'm somebody special, or either mm -hmm. I'm more spiritual than they are because they may do something, they're doing this or doing that. Well, we all do something wrong. Yeah, yeah. But it says we don't have no, we can't boast, we can't brag about, oh, yeah, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Because it says we are his workmanship. God doing the work is us. He's manifesting himself. That's he, right. He's That's doing the right. workmanship. And this was created from the foundation of the earth. Right. See, this, 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 this beforehand. God prepared this beforehand. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is in the in, in the life of uh, prayerfully a saved woman. This is the number one thing is that he's a born again believer. Absolutely. And this is somebody that's walking with God by faith. It doesn't mean that they're perfect. You'll you'll be able to discern uh, human behavior that maybe need you know some tweaking <laughs> as opposed to walking in sin and continuing in sin, mm -hmm. right? Because like Jackie said, you know, none of us can boast because all of us got something wrong. But when God sends you a woman or God sends you a man, in spite of what they have wrong, you will be able to see God in them. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to see. The second thing is not taking this for granted. You're saying that you're saved, but you're treating it like it ain't nothing, right? You want a good woman in your life. You're, you're saying, man, where are the good women at? And this. No, you can't track the good woman when you, you yourself, you're not even putting anything out there that's good. You, you're fleshly and you're carnal. You, 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 you give your life to the Lord, but you go back to doing, living life the way you was always living it. You can't do yeah, that. Yeah. There has to be some God changes yeah. in your life. But this is something that you have to want. So now you've given him your life. You're saved now, right? You're not perfect, but you're walking with him. Treat your salvation like it's precious. And I was saying, that's right, uh, uh, when you was talking, uh, you got some a person when you when if you if they in the, if it, uh, error something going on in their life mm -hmm. and then you just kind of bring the scriptures and show them the scriptures and they rejected that mm -hmm. that's a, that's the red flag there yeah uh, that that's a red flag because if you reject the scripture how can you be corrected by the scripture yeah yeah we were actually having a conversation about that the other day about uh, how the Pharisees were offended. When they heard when when they heard Christ, who was the Word speaking the Word, when they heard they were offended was, yeah. at what He was saying. The only time the Scriptures will offend you is when you don't want to live right or you don't want to do right. Mm -hmm. Cause if it's in the Word of God and you can't get away from it, but you get mad, well, you know you ain't got to live like that. You ain't got to do all of that, and I'm just as saved as you are. Well, your attitude is saying something different. Yeah. It's saying something different. Again, how can two walk together unless they mm -hmm. agree? One of the things you agree is that God's word is God's word. That's it in a nutshell. Okay, the wooden, the 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 the, the, the what you read just as is. It is the word. Now God may give you deeper revelations about that, mm -hmm. but you have to agree that the word is the word. But in Hebrews chapter yeah. 2, verse 3 and 4, it says, How will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? If I stop right there, right, that, like Jackie said, that's a lot. That, that's a mouthful right there. Do not neglect this gift of salvation that God has given you. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about walking this thing out, but right now, you know, he said, how can we escape if we escape what? The wrath, the, the, of, God. The wrath of God. The judgment how, of God. The judgment of yeah. God. Oh, yeah. How can you escape that if you neglect your salvation, right? Ooh. So to a man that is looking for a woman, you got to take your salvation serious. Mm -hmm. You want a God woman? You want to be this man of God? You got to take your salvation serious. You can't treat it like it's no big thing. You know, and, you know, not not really sowing yourself into God. It says, after it was first spoken through the Lord, mm. it was confirmed to us by those who heard. 
God also testifying with them both by signs and wonders and by various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Mm -hmm. So what you don't want to do is treat this gift that God has given you like it ain't no big deal. He has confirmed this. He spoke it. It was confirmed by those that were there with him. If you read the Gospels, you will see who was there, who saw this, who heard this, right? But then you read the Old Testament, you can see Jesus was prophesied in the Old Testament right, yeah. that salvation was coming. Mm -hmm. Salvation was coming. When you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, Christ came into you. His spirit came into you. You cannot treat him like he's not there until you need him. That it doesn't work like that. So what you, when a woman is looking for a man, you're looking for someone who depends on God. That's he right. might be strong. He might be working. He might have things in place. But you're looking for a man that depends on God. His salvation is real to him. And he's not going to throw it away for you. That's right. It's too great. We're not going to neglect this great salvation. i never forget this. Jackie told me one time, he said, he said, I don't, I don't not cheat on you for you. I don't cheat on you because of my relationship with the Lord. When I first heard that, I was like, I, I wanted him to not cheat on me because he loved me and I'm so this and so that with him. That's what I wanted. It took me a while, but I understood what he was saying. I live this life that I live because of the Lord. And that's like Joseph. Joseph, should, should I sin against my God? Yeah. And to go with you, to have that relationship with, with Potter's wife? Yeah. Potiphar. Yeah. Potiphar's yeah. wife? Yeah. He, they, he took that as a sinning against God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I see it now because let's look at it in a common sense way. If I remove God from you, you're going to do in your flesh whatever you want to mm. do. Why? Because God is not there. Yeah. So what you saying is biblical. I don't I don't not sin against you because of me. I sin against you because I don't sin against you because of God. This is what he's done in my life and I don't want to have to give account to him for doing this. You can, what can you do? Leave me. What can you do? But I don't want to be separated from God. Right, yeah. And I get it. So I changed the way I saw it too. I don't not cheat on Jackie because of Jackie. I cheat. I not cheat on Jackie because of my relationship with the Lord. That's the difference. Right? And that keeps me from looking at other men and, and lusting or Absolutely. Because whatever's in your flesh is in your flesh. It's in your flesh. Let me, let me tell you this right here. You want to know what's in your flesh? What were you doing before you got saved? That is it. What were you doing it's before you got saved? Because yeah. that's in your flesh. That's in your flesh. Which is why we have to crucify this flesh. God leveled the playing field. My walk with him ain't no, no easier or stronger than yours. We The playing field is level. Yeah. We have to have the spirit of God first of all to be his. Right? Once we are his. We all got to come the same way. We got to learn the word of God because the word of God is what saves our soul. Mm -hmm. It's the word of God that works in us to will and to do of God's good pleasure. If we have to have the word, right? So without the word, you will still do stuff thinking it's okay, yeah. but you will be convicted. Oh, man, no. You will be convicted. So <laughs> we got one more in that area right there. Philippians 2. Philippians 2. You got to walk this thing out. So first of all, you need to be saved. Second of all, don't treat your salvation like it ain't nothing. Don't treat it like it's just something you can uh, do every now and then. You're still doing everything your flesh wants you to do, but then you're claiming to be saved. And we, I met a lot of people like that. <laughs> they talk about the Lord, but they live they just live a life doing what they want to do. And it's like, I don't quite understand the disconnect. Because if you get with somebody that's really, really walking the word out, you're not going to like them because you're going to be, you're going to see that. Yeah, you can't live like this. What I was reading <laughs> this morning, uh, uh, 
the, the, my daily reading from Friday, it was like, mash the mute button so you don't hear what the person is actually saying, but you watch their life. Mm. So people can talk, and I can talk, we all can talk a certain way, but it's the living that determines at, for the talking That's body. right. Because That's right. like they all say, talk don't care who talking. Mm -hmm. It takes money to buy land. So mute the talking mm -hmm. and watch lives. Mm. Yeah, okay, because one of the things I learned too is that if you really want to know about um, a, 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 a husband or a wife, ask the children. Yeah. Or if you want to know about a man, talk to his wife. If you want to know about a woman, talk to her husband. Mm -hmm. Right? Because those are the only people that see your day-to-day -day yeah. living, right? Which is why a lot of times, um, and I want to be careful going into this, a lot of times you see these angry first ladies and stuff like that. Because, see, they know how he is at home. <laughs> they know how he is at home. Mm -hmm. And they see all these people running up in his face and wanting to talk to him and wanting to pray and want counseling and want this and want that. But they see how he is at home, and they secretly loathe or have this this disrespectful thoughts and feelings about him because they see how you are at home. Mm -hmm. I would rather, well, let me use jacket. Let me use jacket, and this ain't got nothing to do with perfection because jacket is not perfect, and neither am I. But when I met jacket, people. I, I, everywhere we went, they was like, oh, he's a good, he's just a good brother right here. Oh, he's a good man. He is so nice. He said, I heard that everywhere we went. And I don't know him like that. <laughs> when we got married and started living together, I got to see firsthand what these people were talking about. You're talking about a nice guy. A, you know, he's the same guy. He'll do anything for me. Sometimes if I mention stuff, I mention a necklace. <laughs> I mention a necklace, which I know to be careful with this kind of stuff, but I mention a necklace, and I just showed it to Jackie because they said, you know, it, it had this about it and that about it, but I wasn't thinking about getting it or nothing like that. Mother's Day rolled around, and uh, I found out that I had that necklace. He's just a nice guy. He just... He thinks about me. He's courteous and kind to me. Now, having said that, that's Jackie after the spirit. That's just who he is. Now, Jackie has a flesh, just like I have a flesh. And the Bible says to know no man after the oh, flesh. Yeah. I cannot, his moments of being in flesh, I cannot make that about who he is. That's just flesh. But I have flesh. Jackie has ran into my flesh. I don't got small with Jackie. Get his eyes get big. <laughs> oh my goodness. Or sometime I'm pushing a, a something that's going on and he just, oh, enough of this. I'm done with this. Moving on. But we'll get through it because what's in him and what's in me is real. It don't mean we're perfect people. That's right. It just means that this relationship with God is real. And this is what Philippians 2, 12, 13 says. It's so then. It says, so then. My beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. This was Paul talking. Mm -hmm. He said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's reverence for God. Yes. Honoring God. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. It is God who is at work in you, both to desire and to work for his good pleasure. So not only are we saved, not only do we have this precious gift of salvation, God is working in us through his spirit for us to desire and to work, for us to desire and to do his good pleasure. And uh, uh, the Apostle Paul was no joke. He was, a, he was definitely a man of God, mm -hmm. uh, someone that if you around, you was on your best behavior. You're on your best behavior. Mm -hmm. Same as if, if Jesus was near present, you're in your best behavior. He said, now, when I was present with you, you was on your best behavior. 
but I want you to be the same way when you don't see me. That's right. You're not in church, acting churchy, mm -hmm. but when you're home by yourself, that's the test right there. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you, are you looking at porno stuff? Are you, what, what are you doing now? Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. And you want that even, let's say you, 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 you know, you found that woman and you guys have, you know, started to build this relationship. This is who you're going to marry. You want her to see the man of God, whether you're in church or out of church. You just always want to be. So it's, it's better to not be churchy and all of that extra and just be the man of God that you are. I've seen that. I've seen these guys and they're so, oh, it's like, but you, you, you're like that and you just want a woman that you can control. Somebody that, I mean, you show up at church, you, you want to minister, you want to do this, you want to do that, but you want a woman that you can control so that she can fit in that narrative that you are painting for people. Mm. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. That's not good. Just be the man of God that you are. Allow her to be the woman of God that she is. When you come together, make this thing about God. When he say work, work out your, he said work out your own salvation. Own. Don't be trying to work nobody else's out. Don't be trying to tell nobody else how they ought to do and what they ought to do. Work out yours. Jackie just said that. When they watching your life, they'll know. That's right. They'll know. Nobody that we get in our life will be perfect. Jackie told me this. He said, when he met me and he saw the way that I was about God, he said in him in himself, All right, Jackie, you got to come up. You right. got to, you know. He did that because of not I didn't tell you nothing. I didn't say, Well, no. you got to be this or you got No. I didn't say that. That's right. He said that because of what he saw in my life. But guess what? When I saw him, I never seen nobody loved like Jackie loves. And I was like, first, I ain't want, I, I wanted him to quell that a little bit because I didn't want him to love my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want him to love my enemies. Women, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those that, you know, they, they was there at one point and then they wasn't. You know, and then, you know, they trying to treat me bad and stuff like that. I didn't want him to love my enemies, right? I didn't want him to love anybody outside of me better than he loved me. But I met a man that loved like the Bible said. God said to love your enemies. <laughs> he was treating people. I remember one time Jackie had this issue with um, this person. He had helped them out with a lot of money, and they flipped the script on him and everything. His initial response, he was upset about that. But after that, I mean, it wasn't even hours. He had um, made up his mind that, you know, he just was going to love. So I wasn't like that. When you became my enemy, you stayed my enemy. <laughs> when you did something to me, you was written off, cut off. It was it wasn't none of that other stuff. But he kept pointing out that you got to love. That's how you are really known as a disciple of God. I never met nobody like that. You know, if you made yourself my enemy, you just remained in that place. Yeah. That was it in a nutshell. But God is working out in us to desire and to work his good pleasure. So he didn't just leave us here to try to figure this thing out, Jackie. He didn't leave us here to try to figure out how we're going to do this. He put his spirit in us yes. for yes. us to be yes. able to do it. Yes. So if you are a man and you want to know what God is expecting out of you, that's the first part right there with your salvation. Mm -hmm. One that you are saved. Two, that you are taking it serious. And three, that you walking this thing out. Walk it out yeah. Walking it out in your life. It's evident. When, yeah, because you don't you don't want to get to the point where, you know, you you so you so cocky in your in your in your your salvation that you can do anything 
and just continue to in sin. He said, but when you have fear and trembling, that your salvation is that, you know, your salvation, that that makes you like, oh, no, I'm not, no, I ain't going that way. In other words, you, 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 see, you see crack cocaine or whatever, you know that stuff is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Why would you even want to try to sniff it? Why do you want to try to smoke it when you can get addicted so you don't touch it? Some of that stuff, you have to, oh, no, oh, I'm touching that. No, mm -hmm. uh -uh. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it because that's that affect my relationship. And the woman can be crack. The, uh, yeah. uh, these women out here, you know, you got to stop being moved by what you see. Mm -hmm. And we live in a culture now where so many women are drawn to this fake stuff. We got plain, simple, everyday women working nine to five going and paying for stuff to be put in their bodies. And, <laughs> you know, and then you got all of this stuff and you got to maintain this, this hair and and, and all of that, and that stuff is expensive, and you know, so you, 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 <laughs> for the man, you need to really take your time and allow God to show you who the person is. Now, there's a lot of things come up, Jackie. I think we're going to stop right here and, and start there next. Uh, yeah, we can start on, on trust him. That's but it. I want to say this you know, there's a lot of more dynamics out there. You got women that's making more money than men. You got um, women, you got men that don't have a whole lot. They don't have a whole lot to offer a woman, but they are seriously a born-again guy and all of that. God know how to put you with the right woman um, that will increase what you have or put you with the right man who will increase what you have. I would have never, if I wasn't married to Jackie, I would have never left my job. I would have never done it because I would have been afraid to leave my job. And then, you know, that was how I took care of myself and that's all I knew and all of that. But I remember when things started getting hard for me, Jackie told me, he said, you can go ahead on and leave your job. I can provide for you. I can take care of you. I didn't want to do that because I just, I just wanted my own. That was my thinking. Mm -hmm. Not thinking that I could have my own, even with him just taking care of me. But about a year later, after he had said that, I ended up leaving the job. And I was not making a lot of money. I can tell you that I was making under minimum wage. I left with a comp with, with my business, but I was making under minimum wage, if you looked at it like that. Mm -hmm. But um, so everything... When it comes down to relationship, there's a lot of different dynamics. But God know how to put a man that don't have much with a woman that have something, and that man still be the head of the household. That's right, yeah. He can put you with a woman that's making more money than you. And somehow, the way he fixed that thing up, it balances itself out. And then set you up for that lady not to have to work the way she do. So it's it, it's not just cut and dry for as you meet a man and he's this way and that way. No, that that were things that Jackie had about him that God basically told me don't worry about it. And I walked through those things with him. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling y'all, God will change what looks bad. He will change that thing. Can I I use one testimony before we go? Jackie sat me down before we got married, and he told me, he said, I'm in bankruptcy. Well, I didn't even know what that was. He told me what was going on in this life and everything, but I'm seeking God the whole time, and God is letting me know, Jackie, he's good. He's good. He's good. I look, I found out what bankruptcy is, but I walked that out with him. God turned that thing around. He yeah. took, by the time God got done with that jacket, everything was paid off. Jacket owned everything. Owned his house, owned his car, owned my car, right? Uh, uh, still making more than enough money in his retirement. <laughs> God turned that thing around. So I married a man who was in bankruptcy, but he was saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. He had submitted his life to the Lord. That was the game changer yeah, right yeah. there. That's why all the other stuff we're talking about is the most important stuff. That you're saved. That you're really, truly born again. God, uh, ooh, and that you're walking this out with God. God will turn things around. 
And I, I would say this, uh, in this bankruptcy, it was not a chapter seven, it was, a, it was an 11, that means you pay your bill, you pay. Mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you wasn't clear, you wasn't wiped clean. Mm -hmm. You had five years to pay underneath that. So when God turned that thing around and uh, you had not, you, you didn't, it didn't affect you at all. Not at all. God turned that thing around and uh, cause I, remember, I remember that thing was paying, I was paying like $1,200 a month just for that, not kind of house payment, light mm -hmm, bill, mm -hmm. gas bill, car mm -hmm. payment, and all, and all the other stuff. And it was, I mean, God provided me with extra part-time work, and because being law enforcement, I was able to do part-time work, do a lot of things to make additional money. If you, if you don't work, you don't eat. You mm -hmm. have to, God opened up the door for you. Money is just not going to come counterfeit from heaven. Mm -hmm. God will open up opportunity for you to have a little extra job yeah. and do things. To provide for your family and make sure things done, and then and, and then the, the thing went down from I think twelve something, and uh, I had to re, re re look at it, and it dropped down to about three something mm -hmm, a month. Mm -hmm. And man, I, I, I was living in tall cotton then. <laughs> <laughs> when that thing over with, you told me that God gonna have the God. You prophesied to me that God gonna have money coming east west. It gonna be in my safe, in my bank account, and in my wallet pocket. And that is definitely, I'm walking that out today. That's yeah. happening today. Yep, 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 yep. And I, I mean, I was just walking this thing out with him. I never put any pressure on him. I never wanted things that, you know, I, it just was, I'm telling y'all, I'm going to say this again. Men, when it's the right woman, she will be addition and multiplication. Yes, right. When it's not the right woman, it will be a struggle. And it will be subtraction across the board. You will feel like you're losing. You will feel like, you know, you can't get ahead. And it will be a struggle. But when it's a God woman, God will send somebody that has what you need mm -hmm. to be and to do better. Women. You've been out here and single and struggling and you got bills and you got that. When it's God, he will put you with somebody that will get that debt wiped out. Ooh, amen. They Ooh. will, if they had to pay it themselves, they will get it wiped out. Now, do you go on your own trying to find a man, trying to find somebody with this and that and because you want somebody to take care of you? That's a legitimate feeling, wanting somebody to take care of you. But you don't go out looking for that. You don't go out looking for that. You do what the man does. Make sure your salvation is intact. Making sure you're walking that out right, right? Because ultimately, God is the provider. Amen. He will use that man to provide for you. Yeah. He will use that man to provide for you. All right, Jack, and I'm turning the light off up in this camp. <laughs> His study light. Okay, so let's get ready to get out of here, Jackie. I'm going to leave that uh, prayer for you. Pray for Pray for all of us because we might be married now, but we still got to walk this thing yeah. out. So will you please? Yeah. Lord, we thank you for the word of God today. We thank you that you establish marriage. You that man leave home, be with mom and dad and cling to his wife. And I pray, oh God, that uh, you touch marriage. We know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He want to destroy marriage. He want to corrupt marriage and make marriage about something other than what God intended for it to be. But I pray, God, we want to pray for the marriage, pray for the husband, pray for the, for the, for the wife, uh, male and female, God, that uh, that you will continue to walk in their life because, God, that is the very foundation. We can we see how you operate because we see how husband and wife should work together and operate together so we can see how marriage intertwined together to get a glimpse of how you are. And so, Lord, we thank you thank that you, 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 you use this as an example. Praise God. So, God, we thank you. Praise God that you... That you we connected, uh, you are connected to us through like the, like a husband and wife. We had prayed that not only that God, uh, we know people nowadays they want to be cohabitating, they want to separate, they want to divorce, they want to do a lot of things for different reasons. But I pray God that you work it out and reestablish the family together, God, yes, and and, and God. the children, God, will grow up in with a husband, with with a dad, with a mom and a dad, Lord God, and you and that they'll bring their children up. Children up in the admonition of the Lord and know where they are located. Not let them go out at all time of night, God. But God is the very that's why that's why 
the world is the way it is, God, because children is not being raised by their parents like they're supposed to be raised. So I just want to pray for them, God, and strengthen their relationship, strengthen them, God. And after the preachers begin to preach the word of God about family, Lord. Yes. And we want to thank you for this lesson. We thank you, Father God. We have an example on how we are to live, how we are to treat one another, Lord. You say, God, with that we, we can't walk together unless we agree. Yes. And we think that we're not one, we're not two, but we're one, Lord. The husband and wife, we are one. Praise God. So we thank you for the oneness, Lord. And we ask you to bless them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you guys be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We're going to get up out of here with just a little bit of praise. Praise for God. And um, you guys be blessed.